Hi and welcome to another 5 minute tip. In this tip I thought I would take a quick look at some methods that I use to create brackets when modeling things. Oftentimes when creating a model you need to attach one part of the model, in, the, in this case the blue cube, to another part, the yellow cube. And I just wanted to go over really quickly some of the techniques that I use to make these. So to start off I typically grab a fresh cube because it's a nice simple piece of geometry to work from and I just sort of get it into place imagining that one side of the cube is one part of the L bracket and another side of the cube is another part. So in this case I need a longer cube kind of like that and you could probably move it down a little bit so it just touches and then we'd sort of just make it thinner this scene is not to scale so let's not worry about dimensions right now then we can convert it to an editable object start to delete some of these faces and we end up with this sort of L-shaped bracket now of course we're going to want to sort of put things into place and once that's done I just select this center edge that's left and bevel it. I'm going to use subdivision of 3 and a convex so we create something that looks kind of like that. This is a really simple way to manipulate this geometry. You can see here my normals are reversed so I want to uh, reverse my normals. I believe the uh, shortcut is right here and then I can do an extrude shortcut for that is D. You just extrude a little bit and it's going to create a hollow structure but we can actually tell it to create caps creates a solid structure then we can select just these edges on the corners go back to our bevel tool we can probably leave it on the three subdivisions from before sort of round out the edges and then your bolts basically just go in there so that's one way and of course when we're done creating this you can just copy it to move another copy somewhere else. Um, another method I like to use especially with irregular sort of mounts like this. So imagine if what we had to mount was at sort of a strange angle like this but one mounting surface was right here and the other mounting surface was behind this object but you see it kind of hangs underneath. There's a really simple way to tackle that as well. And I also start with a cube for this. So I'm just going to go to my front view, put my cube up here where one of the mounting points would be, scale it down, and then give it just a little bit of overhang, kind of like that. You can also stretch it a little bit. Now we have this um, one cube with that face that represents that surface. Um, we could go ahead and duplicate it. So I'm just going to control drag and make it so we have another cube on the other surface where the other mounting spot will be. And now we can just select both cubes and connect objects plus delete. Oh, I should have converted them to editable objects first. Now I can connect objects plus delete and I just want to select those two faces that we care about I'll invert my selection delete and now I have these two faces and what I can do is use the bridge tool to bridge the gap so in edge mode I can just drag a line over and then I can select these two edges and again we use the bevel tool But this time, 
with less subdivisions. It's okay. Now, we see the problem we have is that if we extrude this, it's, it's going to go in on one end and out on the other end. So in a case like this, we kind of have to make the decision how many, uh, how, how thick do we want to make it. So I'm looking at the distance right here. I'm thinking about that thick would be good. Of course, if your scene was to scale, you could measure it. And so once I have this bracket angled correctly, again, I can select all of my polygons and we can just extrude it. D for extrude. And then we can extrude just like that until it touches. And this other one down here has been extruding out. Now all our normals are reversed again, so we can just uh, reverse the normals to get them facing the right way. And again, we round off the edges because in real manufacturing, when you're making a bracket like this, you typically like to round the edges somewhat. And so that's an instance where we have a bracket in place that looks pretty good. And you can use this same technique when mounting objects that are at very strange angles like this. I put this object here to demonstrate, but I think we get the idea. So this is like a really simple, quick modeling tip uh, that I just sort of thought of, and I thought maybe it might be useful to some people out there. So here it is. And until next time, see you.